tension today. Philippines will stand its ground in South China Sea dispute with Beijing, official says. Tensions over the strategic waterway, a key passage for seaboard trade, have soared in the past 18 months following a series of escalating confrontations between Philippine and Chinese ships. The Philippines will stand our ground in a dispute with Beijing over the South China Sea, a top security official said Friday, eight years after an international ruling against China in the territorial contest. Tensions over the strategic waterway, a key passage for seaborne trade, have soared in the past 18 months following a series of escalating confrontations between Philippine and Chinese ships. The most serious happened on June 17, when China Coast Guard personnel wielding knives, sticks and an axe surrounded and boarded three Philippine Navy boats during a resupply mission to 2nd Thomas Shoal in the Spratly Islands. While the countries agreed last week to de-escalate tensions over the disputed reefs and waters, Philippine National Security Advisor Eduardo Ano said Friday that Manila would not back down. We will continue to stand our ground and push back against coercion, interference, malign influence and other tactics that seek to jeopardize our security and stability, Ano said at an event celebrating the anniversary of the ruling by the Hague Base Permanent Court of Arbitration. The Philippines filed a case against China in 2013. Three years later, the Permanent Court of Arbitration ruled in Manila's favor, declaring China's expansive claims had no legal basis. China refused to take part in the proceedings and has ignored the judgment. Former President Rodrigo Duterte who took office in 2016, set aside the ruling in exchange for warmer ties with China. That changed when Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos was elected in 2022, insisting he would not let China trample on Manila's maritime rights. Since then, diplomatic relations between Manila and Beijing have deteriorated as the Marcos administration pushes back against Chinese actions. China deploys Coast Guard and other vessels to patrol waters around reefs claimed by the Philippines. That includes Second Thomas Shoal, which lies about 200 kilometers, 120 miles from the western Philippine island of Palawan and more than 1,000 kilometers from China's nearest major landmass, Hainan Island. The Philippines deliberately grounded a Navy ship on the reef in 1999 to assert Manila's claims to the area. A handful of Filipino troops stationed on the rusty vessel rely on the regular delivery of provisions for their survival. Dozens of Filipino activists rallied in Manila on Friday to insist that the West Philippine Sea, the Philippines' name for the South China Sea waters to its immediate west, is ours. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said in a statement for the anniversary that Washington remained deeply concerned about China's claims over vast areas that are clearly within the maritime jurisdiction of Vietnam, the Philippines, Malaysia, and Brunei. Blinken called on Beijing to abide by the 2016 arbitral ruling and cease its dangerous and destabilizing conduct. The Philippines has deepened defense cooperation with the United States and other countries in the face of China's growing assertiveness. On Monday, the Philippines signed a key defense pact with Japan that will allow the deployment of troops on each other's territory.
Bono said Friday the government would continue to foster closer ties with like-minded countries and remained open to discussing difficult issues. The Philippines was always open to frank discussion based on mutual respect and sincerity. Anno told the gathering that included ambassadors from the United States, Australia, France and Japan. On other media, at the 26th ASEAN China Summit in September 2023, China and ASEAN adopted the guidelines for accelerating the early conclusion of an effective and substantive code of conduct (COC) in the South China Sea. These guidelines set out a roadmap for the COC negotiations, including a timeline for concluding the agreement and a list of key issues to be addressed. The unilateral arbitration on the South China Sea issue by the so-called South China Sea Arbitration Tribunal eight years ago has given no solution to the dispute, but created more distrust between China and the Philippines, said a Cambodian expert. Soon Sam, a policy analyst at the Royal Academy of Cambodia, told Sinua in a recent interview that the so-called South China Sea arbitration, unilaterally initiated by the Philippines, are not effective at all in resolving the South China Sea issue between China and the Philippines. From the standpoint of historical facts, international law and the declaration on the conduct of parties in the South China Sea, bilateral negotiations will, instead, be the most effective way to solve the issue to safeguard peace and stability in the South China Sea, Sam told Xinhua. Countries directly concerned should hold friendly discussions and never allow extraterritorial countries to interfere in their dialogues and communications, he said. He added that outsiders or countries not directly involved in the issue should stop either hyping up or interfering because their interference is helpless, but harmful. External countries such as the United States and Japan should not continue to stir up problems in the South China Sea under the pretext of freedom of navigation. Sam said, their interference has not only fueled tensions in the South China Sea, but also affected joint efforts made by China and the ASEAN in addressing the issue. He said a solution through peaceful negotiations by countries directly concerned is the most important thing to ensure regional peace and stability, and to maintain close ties and cooperation between China and ASEAN. The outsiders should not try to douse gasoline on fire, he said. At the 26th ASEAN China Summit in September 2023, China and ASEAN adopted the guidelines for accelerating the early conclusion of an effective and substantive code of conduct. COOC in the South China Sea. These guidelines set out a roadmap for the COC negotiations, including a timeline for concluding the agreement and a list of key issues to be addressed. The swift conclusion of an effective and substantive COC will significantly contribute to strategic trust building, peace, security, stability and sustainable development in the region, Sam said.